raising a new generation of Nigerians. Hello, uh, good morning. Good afternoon. My name is DJ Kimiruji, and it's my pleasure to be here with you at the forum. I apologize for my inability to be there physically. I really wanted to be there, but my circumstances beyond my control. But I'm really grateful for the honor and the privilege of being able to speak to this distinguished audience uh, on the topic uh, raising a new generation of Nigerians. Um, I'll go straight to my presentation so I don't waste too much time. On the matter of Nigeria's future, there are uh, at least three groups of Nigeria. Firstly, there are those Nigerians who no longer believe in Nigeria. If you ask them why, they'll repeat statements like Nigeria is a metrographical expression, Nigeria is the mistake of 1914, Nigeria is a forced marriage between incompatibles. If you ask them why, they'll tell you that the entrepreneurial people have nothing in common with the nomadic Fulani, that the Muslim looks to the Middle East and the Christian looks to the West, uh, the Sharia uh, cannot coexist with a liberal constitution. If you ask them why, they will tell you that we are too different to live uh, peacefully in one country, uh, that Nigeria is a British colonial mistake that must be dismantled immediately so that each can go his way. The people in this group are always full of conviction because modern Nigeria with all its contradiction daily supplies them with ammunition. So the people in this group always speak with confidence. Now in the second group, you have those Nigerians who would like to keep believing in Nigeria. Uh, the people in this group are conflicted within themselves. They look around and see how bad things are. They hear the talk coming from those who do not believe and in the light of surrounding events, this talk begins to sound credible. They begin to think to themselves, maybe it's true. Maybe Nigeria is truly beyond redemption. Yet, in the midst of all the doom and gloom, there is something inside these group, this group of people that will not just allow them to give up entirely on hope. And when you ask them, what is it? that keeps you clinging on to hope. They'll tell you it's the memory of growing up in cities like Potako, Lagos, Kaduna, uh, Joss, Enugu, Mina, back in the day when the only fences between people's compounds were flower hedges. <laughs> if you ask them, what is it that keeps you clinging on to hope? They will tell you it's the memories of going to federal government colleges, serving as youth coppers in some strange, exotic part of the country back in the day when you could leave Balchi by three in the afternoon to start heading for Mediburi by road. If you tell, ask them what is it that keeps you clinging on to hope, they'll tell you the fact that many have married across ethno-religious lines and wonder what will become of their children, that many are in fact themselves products of inter-ethnic marriages or are beneficiaries at their workplaces or schools, or the kindness of a boss or colleague or classmate from a different part of the country so that now their loyalties are divided. If you ask them, what is it that keeps you clinging on to hope, they will tell you it is the fact that some were Christians but are now Muslims, some were Muslims but are now Christian, some have forgotten the way to their own villages, no longer speak their own native tongues, have built deeply rooted lives full of meaning and joy in different parts of the country. For these reasons, Nigerians in this group find themselves unable to give up entirely on Nigeria. They keep hoping that maybe a new constitution, an amendment to the old constitution, a new government, a change in the attitude of the current government can still save Nigeria torn between what their eyes are seeing and what their hearts are hoping for. 
the Nigerians in this group are at a high risk of high blood pressure. <laughs> and finally, you have those Nigerians that believe in Nigeria. Those in this group believe not in the government, not in politics, not in the political party, not in the ethnic groups, but in the idea of the nation itself. Those in this group believe that there is a need for a nation like this to exist in a world like this at the time. They believe that, in spite of the fact that Nigeria began life as a British colonial project, that Nigeria is not an accident. They believe that Nigeria is fatal. They believe that Nigeria has a purpose, and that Nigeria will not die, but will not purpose of guilt. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in this context that I say to you today that I believe And I know that in spite of everything I have already said, you will still ask me why. But in all honesty, after many years of engaging in this conversation, I have come to the realization that the question, why do you believe in Nigeria? In the way I have just explained that I do, and that question is really not the question that needs to be answered for people. Because the answer to that question is self-evident. Look around. It is self-evident that this is not the country Lord Lugard set out to create. It is self-evident that when Lord Lugard, a white, racist, imperialist European man, amalgamated the north and south of Nigeria, he did not set out to create the most popular, the most self-confident, the most assertive black country on the face of the earth. That was not his intention. He did not set out to create a country that could in one breath lay claim to a formidable pantheon of African heroes from El Kanemi to Dada of Afu, from Usman Dafudu to from the Nagoya of Darien to the Yaman of the Yaman of the from the war in the Great City of Alcansa, Lord Lugard did not set out to be one single African country so that he was not set out to be. He did not set out, set out to be an African country that would become a continent's most concerned of talent, so that today you can call people from all over the place, like Wolisho in Kaya, Ruth from Abakaya, Ladi from Ruth, Stella Adani from Muhammad Adani, and Ali. We can call them all inspirational, we call them all our fellow citizens. Anywhere I go, I tell you, I do not have to be with that. Anywhere I go, I can say with pride that I come from the country of Fela and Nicola Bokis. But the guy did not set out to give me a privilege. No. He did not set out to create a country that is filled with the ball team, consisting of people like Rashid Yakin, Mutua Bikmuk, Samson, Siatia, JD Okocha, capable of mesmerizing the world. On his biggest stage, he did not set out to create that kaleidoscope of colors. No, let me rephrase that. He did not set out to create this in one book of talent. This orishi rishi of ability, this meta media of capacity, this dimensive force of diversity that has given the world, Hollywood and Bollywood, in fact, any you want, enter for us together. So the question, why do you in all honesty, in my opinion, is not really the question that needs to be answered to people. Because the answer to that question is self evident. I thought you would not have have foreseen these things. If you have foreseen 
Madame Ngozi Okonjo-Emeka, wearing Ankara and Ngozi-Tibo, while her brother, Adishina, is sporting a bow tie at the African Development Bank, while the elder brother, Benedict Oyama, is holding court at the African Import and Export Bank, while their sister, Amina Mohammed, is representing at the United Nations, and the other brother, Mohammed Barkin, is holding things down at OPEC, I tell you, it was regard at 14 senior activities, using the Queen's English to speak to you on one side, while a mosquito is on the other side, bending the Queen's English to the face it was regarded as for seeing the evolution of expressions like how now, no lady, ginger your swan. It had for seen the invention of Afro beats and like that a lot. The crafting of songs like Sanda Lele, Sanda Lele, Sanda. It was regarded as for seeing generations of Nigerian family school children. Through the ages, singing in a glorious Nigerian accent. Today is bright, is bright and fair. Oh, happy day. The people of the dad and the people of the If you have foreseen the creative powerhouse, Nigeria will become on the continental and global stages on account of her diversity of talent. If you have foreseen a dynamic nation, capable of building soft power to great extent and exerting enormous influence on global health. If you have foreseen a black people whose mind and mentality would not be significantly weighed down by a lingering sense of inferiority arising from years of coloniality, this was designed has foreseen this thing. We never have allowed an open mouth of power to mind the problem. So that question, why do you believe in is really not the question that needs to be answered because the answer to that question is self evident. Look around you and see. And when the British formed Nigeria, they were in fierce competition with the French. Now, what were these fierce European rivals here competing for? They were competing for. The most commercially viable territories in the country. They were competing for territories with navigable rivers, good soil, complementary crops, so you know, something to plant all year round. They were competing for territories with natural resources that the world would be willing to pay well for. They were competing for territories that could sustain serious economic activity in the post slave trade era. They were competing for territories that could take money for its occupiers. And in that fierce competition, Britain with Nigeria cornered the high end of the market. From the get go, Nigeria was designed to be a profitable, self sustaining economy. That capacity is built into our very geophysical foundation. We are the temple. We are the image of what a commercially viable territory looks like. That is why now, without even trying, we have the biggest economy in Africa. And I imagine what would happen if we try. So that question, why do you believe in Nigeria? Honestly, is really not the question that needs to be answered. Because the answer to that question is self-evident. For those struggling to believe, the question that really needs to be answered is how. With all the tensions within our ethnicity, with all the rivalry within our tribe, with all the differences between our indigenous nationalities, for those struggling to be, the question that really needs to be answered is how can such a nation be able to work? That is the question that this new generation of Nigerians need to speak squarely and cry. And in tackling that question, I'd like to offer four things that I believe that we must do in order to get Nigeria working. Before the intensive debate about 
what laws are led, what institutions we have. Before this debate can be started, these are four things we must bring to the table. One of which we must bring to the table a willingness to forgive ourselves for the atrocities. We must forgive ourselves for those murders in the scene of January 15th. We must forgive ourselves for those murdered in the counter coup of July 29th. We must forgive ourselves for those murdered in the genocide that took place between May and September. We must forgive ourselves for those killed in the war. We must relieve ourselves of the stronghold of history. We must forgive ourselves for the atrocities of history. We must stop answering for the actions of our fathers and mothers. We must stop trying to complete our quarrels and finish our task. We must give ourselves the permission to live our own lives and follow our own ambition. We must give ourselves the permission to be true to our own authority. To the fact that we have more in common to do than our fathers ever had, we must relieve ourselves from the stronghold of history. We must forgive ourselves for the first This is what we learn. We must bring to the table the willingness to learn. This means that we must bring to the table the willingness to liberate our minds from the shackles of groupthink and the speed of it. Groupthink is herd mentality. This is when you think, this is how my people think. Therefore, this is how I think. But the voice of your people is not the voice of your country. Receive wisdom when you think, my father told you so. What my father told me to do not be from the resident peace of the activity. I grew up believing that the general security was a revolutionary thing for my generation. I had to learn as an adult through reading and research that it was in fact the tool with the most devastating effect for my how we all carry around painted versions of our own national history, still to make our own ethnic group look blameless and keep all others black. But in truth, every group that was involved contributed something significant to creating the best of Nigeria again today. And also, you can see the fault of your own people. Until you can see the fault of your own blood. Until you can see the fault of your own kids and kin. Until you can see the fault of your own brothers and sisters. Then you are blind. You are biased. You are that person walking around with a mud in your eye and criticizing the stress of the eyes of others. You are incapable of building a prayer and death. We must open our eyes and see our history. Not as we wish it was, not as we've been told it was, but as it was in fact. Like this, we must do that. This is number three. Number three, we are lying. We must bring to the table a willingness to realign our political uh, organization. So that we conform more closely with our social economic profile. That means that today, everybody who is in the past, for those nomadic killer who are killers, everybody who is a victim of killer killer is being regardless of state or state. 
Everybody is in the of God. Everybody who has a useful degree of skills. But we were able to get a job because of how they found the understanding. So do you want to do that much of faith? Everybody who has ever buried the gospel, because the monument of God is a general practice, as we need to send the family of friends and local politicians and God to take us. Everybody who has ever buried the gospel, because there are no flaws in the general practice, regardless of faith, everybody who owns the business and has seen it, for Patricia to death, has to death from multiple angles. Everyone who wants to see that and is really dying because of this existing regulatory environment is in the wrong movement. Regardless of things of this like this, we must become immune to the age old tactic of using a original reference to break up mass movements for good government so that when the North is found for better government, the South is found. And when the South is found for better government, not this is how under developing or that under performing politicians provide for students to do by paying one side of the world, but when one is complaining, the other is complaining. When the other is complaining, one is complaining. Until the common vision of that is on how to start, each of them stand up together at the same time to start. There will never be. Mm-hmm. Like this, we must realign our political institutions so that they conform more closely to our actual economic system. This is true. Or, still, we must build our country on the idea of no, I do not say to build on the politics and practices of our country. I said we will build our country on the ideal of the country. If we go to justice and America, that constitution that says that we share the great pleasure, we hold this peace to the country that all men are created. 